Hi, welcome to the Semantics Lecturelet, discussing why we use formal semantics. And we'll be using this semantics uh, for a lot of reasons, and it will be invaluable for us as we try to explain facts about the semantics that involve composition. Now, sim simply put, formal semantics is one that employs uh, symbols uh, especially those from mathematics and logic and even elements of uh, algebra and model theory and so forth. And we do this to, uh, well, we, we do this for several reasons, but the first is just for clarity. Uh, when we use a formal semantics, we have precise definitions of what these symbols mean, and these symbols are uh, widely understood, and they're also language independent. So when we use a symbol, uh, no matter what language, what meta-language we're using, anyone who might be familiar with some other meta-language will know exactly what that symbol means, uh, and we don't have to worry about losing things in translation. Now my favorite explanation of formal semantics that I've read comes from a book uh, called Semantics for Latin by Devine and Stevens, which applies formal semantics to the study of Latin grammar. And it's a lot of fun to read, especially if you're uh, into the classics, uh, even a little bit. And it's an interesting kind of book, and I think it might even be a nice model for uh, descriptive grammars, applying semantics to these, uh, to these issues of description and documentation. But you know, in their text, they, they make it pretty, you know, in their book, they make a pretty straightforward case. Uh, and they say, you know, formal semantics is more precise than the notional semantics of traditional grammars because it gives well-defined expressions for the meaning of syntactic constituents and a mathematically exact account of how the meanings of individual words combine to form those constituents and how those constituents themselves combine to form intermediate and sentence-level meanings in terms of their denotation. And what's important is another thing they point out, but it's, an import, it's important that it's not just simply a way of rewriting old things, it's a way of developing new ideas about how meaning works and about uh, making discoveries and using this, this formal semantics to make clear hypotheses that make clear predictions that are easily understood by other people. Now, when I say easily understood, there's a learning curve involved. You have to learn these symbols and learn how they're used. And once you do that, then this is all easily understood. So semantics scares a lot of people off because of its formal nature. But once you, once you get into the hang of it, once you get used to it, as you will in this course, it'll become second nature. And these expressions will become very easy to read and understand. Now, to give some examples of uh, how formal semantics works or formal uh, ex expressions work, we can start with a simple um, kind of expression called a syllogism. Now, a syllogism dates back you know, to the time of the ancient Greeks, and it's essentially a, a short logical argument that, uh, ex that takes two propositions, and together entails a third. So for instance, the classic one, uh, every person is mortal for one proposition. Socrates is a person as a second proposition. And then from those two propositions, we can conclude that Socrates is mortal. Note that this is a logically valid argument, whether or not Socrates is actually a person. It's just that if he were a person, and if every person were mortal, then Socrates would be mortal too. That is to say, these propositions, the first two propositions, which are called the premises, entail together the third proposition, which is called the conclusion. Uh, neither, one, neither, neither, neither premise entails the conclusion by itself, and that's the heart of the syllogism. But there are syllogisms that are a little more complex, too. And so, for instance, this one. If it rains, we'll get wet. 
If we get wet, we'll cry. If it rains, we'll cry. That we can conclude. If the first two are true, the third one has to be true. There's no way around it. That's how entailment works. Now, where the formal part comes in is when we're trying to generalize over these kinds of syllogisms. So here's another example. Um, if the Broncos win, we'll drink. If we drink, we'll cheer. So if the Broncos win, we'll cheer. That is a true, you know, that's a syllogism that'll work as well. But it has the same structure as if it rains, we'll get wet. And if we're trying to understand how this logic works, which is what philosophers uh, spend a lot of time doing, then we want to have a generalization. Well, why do these arguments work this way? And for that, this is where formalization comes in. So we can replace the propositions with variables. And we can do that because it doesn't matter what the propositions are, it's the relationship that is the same. So instead of saying, if it rains, we'll get wet, we can say, replace it rains with P and get wet with Q. And we have if P, then Q. We can do the same with Q and R. If, it, if we get wet, that's Q. We keep it as Q. We'll cry is R. So if Q, then R. And then the conclusion we replace, we get if P, then R. And this relationship works, no matter what P, Q, and R actually are, as long as they're, they're compatible with each other. And so we have if P, then Q, if Q, then R, and if P, then R. And uh, to make it even more formal, notice that the, the if-then relation is something that we see all over the place. And so uh, this kind of uh, relation, which is called implication, and um, is represented by an arrow. But it, it's a little tricky because it's not an arrow before P, with, like if, but it's an arrow between P and Q. So you get P arrow Q, if P, then Q, and so forth. So now we have if P, then Q, if Q, then R, entailed if P, then R. Now, this is a pretty simple you know, uh, formalization. They get more complicated. Right? So to come back to every person is immortal, you get something that looks like this. Every, the first part means everything that is a person is mortal. Socrates is a person, and Socrates is mortal. And we'll talk more about these symbols uh, when we talk about sets and quantifiers. But the, the idea is simple, and it doesn't matter what P is, what M is, and what, you know, S, it doesn't matter what any of these variables actually mean. The syllogism holds. And that's the power of formal expressions. And we'll be able to do that. And we'll be able to make generalizations that go as, as high as a semantic universal because we have this formal language to describe it.